Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another video by Simply Code. In this session, we'll learn the CSS Flexbox concept and how you can use it to design a very good and effective layout. A flexbox is an important concept if you want to learn web designing and web development. So, without further delay, let's move forward. What is a flexbox? Flexbox also called flexible box model is basically a layout mode or model that provides an easy and clean way to arrange the items within a container. If you are using a CSS for a while, you must have used the old block model where you assign width in terms of percentage or fixed width and then use the float to arrange the items on the page. Suppose for example, you want to arrange three boxes in a row. Then you have to enter everything manually from width, height and to padding. Flexbox can do all these things with ease. Some of the concepts of flexible box model is the ability to alter the item width and height to best fit in the containers available in the free space. Flex model is di direction agnostic, which is different from the box model, which is vertically biased and the inline which is horizontally biased. Flexbox works for both. Flexbox is more effective than small scale layouts. So here are the main properties of the flex. Okay, so let's jump to some code and learn how these flex properties work. Okay, so we are on the sublime text editor. To get started, let's add a div inside a body here and we'll give a class of flexbox container. Since this will be the container where all our flexbox item will reside. Then inside this container, we will add another div and give it a class flexbox item and one more class flexbox item one, which will help us to understand which items we are referring to when we style our elements individually. Let's just save the file and see how it looks on a page. Now if you save the file, you can see we have the box because I have already applied some of the styles to these flexbox items. Let's just see the styling. So you can see we have the item styled just a basic styling so that we get the box on our page. Now let's just copy these and add two more flexbox items and you will see we have two more boxes on our page. Just copy and paste them below. Give them the class name flexbox item 2 and flexbox item 3. Just save the file. Now you can see we have three boxes on the page. Now to create a flex container, we will add display flex to our flex container. And this is how we create a flex box container. So here we will just add display flex. Just save the file. Now you can see all the items are in the same height and they are all in the same row. You will also notice that if we shrink our browser, the items adjust themselves accordingly to fit within the browser. Now, if you want to style the elements on the main axis, we will use the property justify content inside a flexbox container. Let's make it a center. Save the file. Now you can see that all the elements are in the center of the page. Another thing we can do is if we want our layout to have a spaces between the elements, we will set the justify content to space between. You can see all the items are now evenly spaced. If you want to lay out your items on the cross axis, we would use the align items property. The default value for this is stretch. If we want to keep the size of our items, we will use the center and then all our items will be centered vertically. Before Flexbox, aligning the items vertically inside the container was nearly impossible. With Flexbox, you can do it easily. 
Now you can see the items are aligned vertically inside the container. Now let's just delete everything and we'll just keep the display flex. Now if you want to have a column layout instead, we'll use the flex direction and change it to column. Flex direction, column. Now if you refresh the page, you will see all the items are shown up in a column. Now we can start talking about the different properties that can be applied to our different flexbox items as opposed to the flexbox container items. The flexbox container is only for laying out and spacing between your items as well as the positioning of your item inside the container. The actual flexbox item properties are used to override those item properties or to apply different sizing to these elements. Now if we want our first item that it does not shrink when we shrink our browser, we'll set the flex shrink to zero to our first item. So we'll set the flex shrink to zero. Now if you go back to the page, and try to shrink this. You will see the first item remains the same. It does not shrink. Now, in the same way, you can set the items to grow in proportion with the web browser. Suppose we want our flex box item to, to grow with the as the page grow and cover all the empty spaces. So we'll set this flex grow to one. Now you will see. The, all the empty spaces are taken by the second item. Let's say we want a second box to be the center of the container instead of stretching to full height. We can use the align self property and set it to center. Now you will see that the align self property overrides the align content property of the container. You can see it is centrally aligned. So this is all you need to understand and get started to work with the flex boxes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new about the flex box and how you can use the flex box to create the dynamic layout for your site. With this, we come to an end to this tutorial. I hope this video was useful for you and after this, you have a fair understanding of what CSS flex box is and how to use it. If yes, do subscribe to our channel and share this video to the maximum so that you never miss an update. Thank you again and happy learning.